Welcome to the Impact Nations podcast. My name is Tim. I am your host, and uh, we are uh, joined today by some mysterious guests. This is the first time we've ever had this before, but actually we've got some guests in studio who cannot be seen. Uh, unfortunately, that means you're going to get more of me on the camera. Um, if you're listening to the audio podcast, then you win. Perhaps this is the best time to have only audio because it's just a whole lot of my face. Um, but uh, the reason we have undisclosed guests today is because we've actually got some partners in town who are serving in an undisclosed nation. Uh, and we uh, knew they were in town. As always, anytime we've got partners in town, we like to get them right here in the studio. Uh, but uh, we can't show their faces, can't disclose where they're doing ministry. So uh, bear with us as we kind of dance around that issue a little bit. But it's really, really important to us that you guys, the Impact Nations family, feel connected to uh, the folks that you are championing uh, all around the world. And uh, this couple here are doing some amazing work. And so we really wanted to, to share that uh, with, with you guys. So uh, I should say, by the way, uh, hopefully you found us again. Sorry, we had some audio difficulties because Facebook is awesome. I don't care whether they change their name or not. Uh, they are not blessing me no matter what you call them. Uh, but we're glad to be on their f platform just the same. Uh, <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I will say welcome to our special mystery guests. Thank you. It's great to be part <laughs> of the Impact Nations family. Um, I wondered if you could share with us what on earth made you pack up and move across the world? Uh, you guys were settled and, and everything was going great for you. Why would you suddenly sell everything you had and move to another country? Hi, Tim. Well, really an honor to be here with you today. Um, yes, yeah, so for several years, we had been working with Impact Nations, doing water filters in different countries and um, a, a particular country had a, a major crisis, a natural disaster, and we just prayed and said, God, what do you want us to do? And we felt like he said, go. Mm -hmm. And so we um, contacted Impact Nations and another organization, uh, Ugandan Water Project, and we all three, all three of us organizations collaborated together and brought a thousand water filters this, to this country. Um, and this country is very beautiful. The people are very beautiful. Um, and something just really grabbed my heart. And I decided I really want to bring a team back here. Mm -hmm. I, I really want to come back. And so we came back uh, multiple times. And, and then uh, after several years of doing that, uh, we just felt uh, God wanted us to uproot where we were living and move there. So we did. Was that a scary thing to do? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, it it was something that God had made really clear, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when I say made clear, uh, it was because we had a lot of support from family, friends, Impact Nations, mm -hmm. uh, pastors, our home church. And yet you could have still called me Doubting Thomas because I, I, I just wasn't sure it was a big step to take, yeah. leaving family, leaving friends, and moving across the world. But every time I asked God, he made it really clear. And one t like one time, for example, I said, God, are you sure? And that morning when we went to church, someone came up to me randomly and said, hey, I heard you're going to this country. I'm going to support you $100 a month. And it was the first time anyone <laughs> was getting behind like us to support us. you hadn't even started us. soliciting for funds No, anyway. yeah. no. And that's actually not something that we do very well. We can do it for other people, <laughs> but for ourselves is a little more challenging. Yeah. And because we'd sold the business, um, we had that money coming in. So we weren't actively pursuing people yeah. giving to us but yet when that person said i'm going to get behind you it was like god saying i'm going to get behind you yeah wow isn't god so good too like he he's gracious in our uncertainty he like he just gives us that extra little bit of, of peace mm -hmm. to to hear his voice i love that well and we can't renege on our prayers either like when i was a teenager i said god i'll go anywhere you tell me to go 
And a very dangerous thing <laughs> to say. <laughs> 30 years later, I was very tempted to pray anywhere but, <laughs> you know, this country. And then God was like, no, I'm going to hold you to that prayer because I've got good things. Wow. And we've got a good father, right? We can trust Amen him yeah. with every step of the way when he says, ask us to do something. Yeah. might look scary to us, but he's holding our hand through it all. And we just have to remember that and yeah. believe he's with us. Absolutely. All right, so you are in said undisclosed country. What, uh, broad strokes, uh, big picture, what's the mission? What did you guys go there to do? Well, we uh, teach and the alternative uh, business training course. It's a simple, practical business uh, course for startups. And so we went there and set up a business. It's a for-profit business, uh, but a social enterprise. So it has a social impact side of it. Um, <clears throat> so we teach uh, this business training course. We are a business incubator. Actually, we were the first foreign-owned uh, business incubator, for-profit uh, business incubator in, uh, in Asia or wherever. That place. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we we help people that want to start their own small business get going, uh, get set up. Uh, we do some seed funding. Uh, we help them uh, through the myriad of small little steps it takes to start a business. Mm. Yeah, so can you, uh, and perhaps you just did, but, but uh, make it real clear for us. When you say a business incubator, like that's kind of a weird term. Mm -hmm. Wh what does that mean? Oh, it's, I mean, it's kind of like an egg incubator. <laughs> 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 um, it takes, you know, time and uh, it takes resources and it takes knowledge to start a business. So. Yeah. Um, most people, you know, they start out with a great idea of, oh, I want to do this, I want to start this, and but they have no idea how to get started, what steps they have to do to uh, do all the setup and the knowledge they need to actually run it. Um, so <clears throat> we, we help them with that, and then we also provide them with space, sometimes if they need space in our building, uh, or with equipment. Uh, we help uh, with sometimes with seed funding, um, if if it's something that's a really good idea and we want to help them that way. Uh, so yeah, an incubator basically just gives uh, a startup everything they need to work in an environment that they have support. Um, they're not on completely on their own. They, they have some accountability. Uh, they have help like as a consulting, uh, you know, consulting when they need it. Yeah. Um, I want to hang out here for a little bit if we can, because mm. you now you're talking my language. Uh, mm. Our listeners know I, I just absolutely love the skills and business development side of, of the work that we do at Impact Nations. And uh, truth be told, uh, you guys have played a major role in that, um, helping us uh, really develop this aspect of, of the Impact Nations ministry. Uh, what drew you guys to skills and business development in general as a as a type of ministry or platform of ministry because uh, you've been doing that in other countries as well prior to this well uh my husband's a businessman <laughs> <laughs> so and he was good at what he did too and he had spent 25 years it was something that he knew and i love to teach hmm. so when we combined his business interest with my love for teaching, it was like a great fit. Yeah. And I just come alive when I get to teach. So um, when we saw those two married together, like, yeah, you can teach business and help people, you know, okay, so another part of it, help people lift them up out of the dust. Like yeah. that's one of, one of the verses that we love, just that he lifts the poor out of the dust to set them with the princes of his people. And business does that for people. You know, it, it's something that the developing nations need. Yeah. And it was um, something that we could help them with. Hmm. And there's a lot of uh, at-risk people, uh, that we, especially women, that we really wanted to help empower them and, uh, as I said, lift them, so to speak, out of the dust to sit with the princes of his people. And I kind of look at starting businesses as almost like an ecosystem where um, 
the more businesses we can start, the more jobs we can create. Not everyone is designed to start their own business, but uh, but everyone is designed to be productive and to mm. to work and have dig dignity. And sometimes that's just in a good job, or it's it's starting their own business. So we're trying to create this ecosystem of small businesses that that women can come through and and either get a good job or you know join the other stars in the universe <laughs> as as a businesswoman. Yeah. So yeah. What what sort of businesses are you guys seeing get started as a result? Oh, we we've seen a bakery get started. We've uh, got a video editing uh, company. Uh, we have a quail farm. Uh, we have a succulent garden business, uh, an employment agency, so a jewelry business, a few, a wow. few different ones. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, as you're teaching the the curriculum, the alternative curriculum that our, our listeners hear us talk about a lot here, uh, what what is perhaps the the thing that resonates most or is you think is most needed of the, of the topics that you cover in this curriculum what do you think is like the absolute one thing that it's just kind of they needed to know they there's they wouldn't have known and it makes all the difference i don't think we can narrow it down to one okay. because it depends on each individual like one guy had a failed business three times mm. and he realized pricing he needed help with his pricing. Yeah. Someone else, though, it might have been budgeting or that they needed the comparative advantage, like what can they do to make their business stand out from all the rest? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think it depends a little on where they're at. Uh, it, you know, it's a risky thing to start a business. So I think like even we talk about dreaming, we talk about the obstacles to your dreams. And when they see that there's actually hope, they can do this. Uh, as they work with a community, as they work with a family, so to speak, um, yeah, it, it gives them hope and confidence to move forward. Yeah. The, you mentioned the incubation in, involves kind of that ongoing coaching and mentorship and stuff. You guys must get very connected. Like it, there must be a real strength of relationship with some of these folks as they continue to, to lean on you for guidance and mm -hmm. wisdom and stuff, eh? Yes, I mean, Tim, <clears throat> the only really good things that happen are through relationship. Um, we we don't do any big things with small relationship. It has to be yeah. big things, big relationship, small things, small relationship. And we enjoy that part. I, I particularly really enjoy the one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions. Uh, it, it gives so much opportunity for... Uh, personal growth as mm -hmm. well as you know learning business knowledge but you're helping to build that person's identity and who they are especially if they're Christians um, just helping them who th to know who they are in Christ and giving them that um, that confidence that they can move forward because they're created to do this yeah it's actually really it's actually really fun to watch my husband interact mm -hmm. with these business startups because he'll get texts saying they call him dad dad mm -hmm. i'm really low right now mm -hmm. i don't know if god really loves me wow. you know this just gets down to a really practical level of yeah. it's not just business hmm. that's just an avenue yeah. you know that we get to be there um that sometimes there's one who has some bouts of depression and suicide you know you're it, it's it's just getting to walk with people yeah. in a deeper way. And that's really what drew us to want to move across the sea. And it was an opportunity to go deeper. And we're definitely in the deep end now. Yeah. But we're swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we find that a lot of times we end up being their only positive voice. Wow. Um, we are sometimes their only family. Uh, they may have zero family support zero community support and their whole life they've been told they can't do it they're nothing they'll never amount to anything and so when we we tell them i had this happen with one girl that was that i was helping and i said i i believe in you and she said that's the first time anyone's ever told me that my whole life oh. you know wow. so that's special what an incredible opportunity you have um let's shift gears a little bit i want to talk about 
where you guys are rescuing people from. Uh, at Impact Nations, the way I, I often kind of quickly describe to people the process in terms of our skills and business development side of things is it's kind of a three-step process of rescue, restoration, and release. And I think we've been talking a little bit about the release side of things, you know, releasing them into business. Some of the restoration in terms of ongoing discipleship, coaching, mentorship, uh, just teaching them these skills. But let's let's kind of go backwards here. Let's talk about rescue. Where are you rescuing people from? What kind of circumstances are they coming from when when they enter your world? Well, we have a social side of the business, and we call it our house of hope. Hmm. And the women that come there are in desperate situations where they're unable to make a living. Some of them are moms. Some of them are looking for like the next step after they've graduated from high school and there's a high chance of them being exploited or trafficked. And so we have a one year um, residential program at the House of Hope where they get to come and learn skills. And uh, we also couple that with values, training, parenting, uh, mental health, inner healing. And then they're also learning the business side of things if and we figure out if they're going to be able to run their own business if not we plug them into a business that's already running or find them a job mm -hmm. uh, then they can get training in knitting in sewing in felting um, and we're exploring new ideas all the time i love new ideas that's awesome we'll talk about those in a few minutes some of those um, as you're, as you're rescuing people, you guys have mentioned a few times just helping people find employment. Um, and by the way, you guys can interject stories anytime you want. We love stories here. That's why we, we make sure we take time in our, even in our Christmas catalog to tell stories. Uh, so if you guys have some specific stories of folks that have been rescued uh, through your program, we want to hear it for sure. Um, finding employment, what happens, what's the change between when you encounter them at first and perhaps they're not ready to go find employment uh, and when they are ready to go and find employment. Like what's, what's keeping them from getting a job when you guys first meet these folks? You know, I'll, I'll tell you one story be, since she likes stories. Indeed. Uh, she w this was a single mom. She'd lost her husband. She'd been a stay-at-home mom. Yep. But her husband's family was not very supportive of her at all. And so she moved in to the House of Hope with her two daughters, and they started to get a better education than what they'd been receiving in the village, even though we were homeschooling because of COVID. <laughs> uh, actually, all the kids now are at the head of their class. Wow. Schools have opened back up, wow. and I'm super proud to be able to say that. that I didn't. That means some homeschooling was like top-notch schooling that they were getting there before they got to school. Well, they didn't have many days off, I can tell you that. <laughs> we There'll be no slackers in this house. <laughs> <laughs> so this mom, she had, her knitting was top notch. Mm. And someone, a friend had come and taught some knitting. She already knew some. She, it gave, but that, that knitting class gave her some confidence yeah. in her skills, like she can do this. So she went for an interview at a fair uh, pri fair trade, what do we call that? Fair trade uh, hiring. F it's a factory mm -hmm. that was looking for knitters. And the thing was, though, she lacked so much confidence. She was even confidence. afraid, like, to cross the street wow. to get there. So we, it was a lot of hand holding mm -hmm. that we did. But when she heard she got the job, it, you know, her confidence levels soared. Wow. So and this is a this is a company where she'll be able to support her family yeah. on this and have pr provide for a good future for her girls. Yeah. So confidence is a is a big one. Uh, and do you guys like teach job interview skills? How like how do you kind of build that confidence? Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, we did definitely. We did mock interviews and um, helped her be able to answer the questions in a confident way. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I think another obstacle is that they, they many of them have stopped dreaming, or they don't even know where to start. So, they don't even know what they want to do. Yeah. Um, so that's a, so helping them to discover how they're wired, how they're, what they're created to do, uh, what they want to do. That's um, so we expose them to different kinds of 
uh, opportunities to see what they like. Um, and so also with our network, a, a lot of the people that we're working with, we have job opportunities uh, that we can offer them sometimes that they wouldn't have had in their situation yeah. in the village or mm. whatever. Yeah. Um, we do have some viewers live, and I can see comments. Uh, hello, Anne. Um, uh, so if if you guys have questions, just uh, keep in mind, I know a lot of our listeners do know the identity of our guests today, so uh, please be sensitive to the fact that we're trying to keep that hidden. But uh, if you can ask a question in a way that honors that, uh, we'd love to, to discuss anything you guys uh, have questions about as well, for sure. Um, all right, so can you just maybe tell us a little bit more about the House of Hope? Like, what's a day at the House of Hope look like? Well, we have them get up and do some remedial education. Mm -hmm. No slackers, like you yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> and then optional devos is at nine. Mm. Uh, we don't force anyone yeah. to, to do what they don't want to participate in that's um, along the lines of faith. And because it's their choice, you know, in the end. And uh, then there's um, meals. Everyone takes turns. Do, you know, everyone contributes to the household how it runs. Yeah. We've got 27 living there right now, 12 kiddos, nine women in the program. How many bathrooms do you have? Oh, <laughs> good question, right? That's a lot of people. <laughs> Six bedrooms. I think there's four bathrooms, wow. five maybe, if you wow. count the outside squatty potty. <laughs> so uh, then they do hard skills training like the tailoring or the felting. And then in the afternoon, three to five, we do soft skills, values, different day, different topic, but yeah. values or parenting, mental health. English. Yep, English. And we end the day with remedial skills too. So they start out, you know, reviewing what they learned the night before, uh, spending time with their kiddos if they're moms, mm -hmm. um, doing other homework then in the evenings, eat around 7.30, rooms by nine. Yeah, it's wow. a it's a yeah. scheduled day. Yeah, it's very very tightly scheduled, that's wild. Is that a big adjustment for uh, newcomers to the home? I imagine for some of them it would be. <laughs> Do you get, um, is there friction at times when, when you've got somebody new to, I mean, a community that, like that, I presume over time that you become very tightly knit, but then when you introduce somebody new to that, uh, I would think that that would kind of upset the apple cart a little bit at, at first. You know, it's a very welcoming home. Hmm. Very. Like, we celebrate as much as we can. We find reasons to celebrate, whether it's a birthday or uh, someone new coming in. We cut cake and party. Um, the friction actually just comes from living together. You know, I mean, you put that many women in one house and you're bound to have some <laughs> times of friction, but it's all learning how to resolve conflict, how to say I'm sorry, which is hard in an Asian culture where they're not, it's never really modeled. So yeah. um, we get to practice forgiveness and it's fun to watch the ladies grow. We had six baptisms this Come year. Come on, that's yeah. fabulous. And just... Uh, in the last month, two new women asked Jesus to be wow. their Lord, wow. Lord of their lives. Yeah. So, and that was after a time of, like, we had a mental health class, and my director had written a letter to herself from God because she had been feeling kind of low, yeah. and she's a single mom, so she understands where these women are coming that's, from. That's so important. Uh, so she'd written this letter to herself from God based on Song of Solomon, and she read it to the ladies, and they broke out in just dancing, jumping up and down and dancing for at least 45 seconds because that's the video I got. <laughs> <laughs> I think Isaiah has that video, doesn't he? He does have that video. Uh, you want to you show that? There we go. <laughs> 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 there they're dancing. I love it. <laughs> and right after that, two of the Hindus gave their hearts to Jesus and it just was powerful. It, wow. You know, this is life changing. Yeah. When, how do you guys incorporate the gospel into what you're doing? I mean, you're demonstrating the gospel every single day. Um, but I know this is a no strings attached program. It's not, you know, if you want to come in here, you got to pray a prayer sort of mm -hmm. a thing. What's, what's your philosophy? What's your approach? Belonging. 
Mm-hmm. You know, this is a place that you belong. A lot of these women that come to us don't belong where they're at. Wow. They don't feel that belonging. And so they're looking for family. And in the middle of the catalog is, mm-hmm. um, you know, a story of a woman who didn't belong. And, you know, when you've been abandoned or your husband has died and you're left with his family and you no longer fit in or you're just a burden to them, yeah. you know, then come to us, you know, and, and you get to belong and feel like you're a part. And, and then we just model a lot of love and acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. Love is love crosses all cultural barriers. And that begins to just soften hearts and, yeah. and transform lives. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to show this on the camera, but I realized that the page is being mostly white. It's pretty much blown out. But uh, this is probably a good chance for me to actually pause for a brief ad uh, that is very much tied into what you just said, uh, which is the Impact Nation's Christmas catalog. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, hopefully you, if you're in the United States, you probably have already received your print copy uh, in the mail. If you haven't, give us a shout. Uh, if you're in Canada, you should receive yours very soon. And Australia, well, you guys, uh, yours is on a raft that's crossing the ocean right now and hopefully we'll get there soon um but as you have probably heard us say on the impact nations podcast before this is an excellent way to to get involved in what impact nations is doing it's also a really good way to learn more about what impact nations is doing around the world uh we've got stories on just about every single page uh, specific stories about an individual or a family that have been directly impacted by the program that is being described on that page uh and so it's a way to celebrate our partners and the work that they're doing uh, and then to participate there's gifts on every page that you can choose to give uh, that is going to go directly to the field to help our partners such as these folks here uh, do what they do so uh, I would uh, encourage you to check out the House of Hope in the catalog this is the first year we've had the House of Hope in the Christmas catalog uh, if you go to impactnations.com slash Christmas uh, you can see our online version you can get shopping today uh, and uh, look for gifts of hope uh, and you you'll be giving directly to the House of Hope. Uh, you can learn more about the program there. Uh, and again, read that story of just rescue and, and that real belonging, like you said. Uh, that's so powerful. So Tim, I also noticed that yeah. you can get cards to mm. give to the person. Yes. Well, you're good at this. Uh, yeah, thank you I for love saying that so. Part. It's it's really cool actually because one of the things we've done this year was we've changed our supplier on the cards that we send. So uh, now that means that uh, the card is going to be sent in the mail the very next day uh, to your loved one. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. Uh, if you go to impactnations.com/christmas and you find the gift you want, and there's so many to choose from, but definitely pick one uh, for the House of Hope because there's some really cool stuff there, including teaching a woman to weld. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, give a gift uh, to Impact Nations uh, on behalf of a loved one. Right, right after you select the gift, there's a thing that pops up that says, hey, do you want to give this gift as, as a tribute, effectively, in honor of uh, a friend or a family member or whatever? You click yes, and then up pops an option. You can either send them an e-card, which will be an email, and you can send that right away, or you can send a printed card, which will go in the mail. Uh, it comes in the mail and looks exactly like it has come from that person because the return address is not Impact Nations, doesn't say Impact Nations anywhere on the outside of the envelope. Uh, so it looks like it's just coming from, from your friend or your grandma or whatever. Uh, and, uh, and then you open it up and you get a personalized message that was written to you by the person who gave the gift. So when you're on our website, you say, yes, I want to send a card. You write a little message, dear Uncle Howie, uh, I'm sorry that I got you a plunger last year. I hope you like this better. Here is a gift uh, to the poor. Uh, we knew that you you love the poor and we wanted to help out. Uh, so here you go. And then on the front of the card, it gives a, a brief description of exactly what that specific gift was all about and stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, do check it out. Thank you for that plug. Uh, and like I said, you you make that gift at impactnations.com slash Christmas and that gift will be in the mail like the next day they'll put it they'll put the stamp on it and it's gone so pretty cool and that by the way that's in the mail next day in canada australia and the united states so if you're in europe i'm sorry we can't help you as much but (laughs) it'll get there just i don't know how long it'll take um impactnations.com christmas all right uh welding i mentioned welding 
Um, first time we've had a picture of a welder in the uh, Christmas catalog. Uh, and I made up, there is a Christmas card for the welding, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so it's got a picture of somebody welding right there on mm. the Christmas card, which that's pretty rare, by the way. You, it's hard to find a Christmas card with a welder on it. Um, <laughs> why, are we, why are we doing welding this year? What's that all about? Well, um, <clears throat> during lockdown, um, an, an idea came out to start a quail farm. Mm -hmm. And a couple of our women wanted to start this. And so we thought, let's learn about this. Let's study it and see. And, and so we ended up starting a quail farm and we ended up uh, building our first uh, cages out of wood. Uh, but we also realized that's not gonna last very long with the uh, moisture and everything. So we uh, had a welder make us some um, uh, nice quail cages. Uh, but it wasn't cheap and we thought man we really need a supplier that will help us make these uh, quail cages at a much more reasonable price yet um, let's just see i thought maybe maybe one of our women would want to learn welding from the development center uh, or from the house of hope and uh, sure enough one of them did one of our graduates anna she um, really wanted to learn welding and so we we got her an internship with a Christian uh, welding company hmm. and they're training her like three days a week and her very first product was she made a cross and a simple welding project but it was I just thought it was significant that that's the first thing she wanted to make was yeah. a cross and, and and then she made some plant stands and uh, she's really growing and learning and she's really excited about this there are no women welders in, in the country we're working in. <laughs> um, I think I can edit that later. <laughs> um, that uh, we know of. So she's excited about being the first woman welder or one of the first women welders. Yeah, That's cool. So we're hoping to get a few more welders going. We are. We uh, are. Uh, once she learns and she can get a couple other ones. Yeah. Helping. I love the variety. We have so many different skills. Uh, we were talking earlier about some of the skills we're that our partners in Uganda are teaching and we couldn't even remember them all and now you guys are adding new ones to the to the stable of skills that are being taught as well it's wild I love it um, just before I, I move on from the House of Hope and talk a little bit more about you guys and how you're doing it is there anything else and I don't know if there was other pictures that you'd uh, given to Isaiah to share or anything like that but anything else you guys wanted to share uh, stories or, or just uh, anything else God's doing through the House of Hope Oh, we had a neat opportunity. You know, Annabelle at the Remnant Generation mm -hmm. is one of my heroes. She has sat in that very chair. Oh, <laughs> so cool. Uh, and recently we found out through a lawyer that this one woman needed a place to give birth to a baby. Mm. And she was pregnant by rape and Hindu and her mm. family had said, go have the baby somewhere else. They're, you know, we don't, it's a shame to shame. us. Yeah. And so she came to us and ride. yeah, two days bus ride. They wouldn't let her on an airplane because she was too close to delivering, but you can take a two day bus ride over the bumpy roads. <laughs> oh, that's and cool. then 10 days later, she gave birth to this beautiful baby. And um, she's, she's one of our new ones that I have not met yet, but hmm. my director and house ama are taking very good care of her. Yeah. And I, it's just a uh, neat to constantly have new opportunities. Yeah. You know, there's no story is the same. Mm -hmm. Every person that comes through our door is going to be a little bit different and unique. And so it's a real yeah. privilege, you know, to get to walk their <laughs> journey with them. That's that's wonderful. I, it is amazing how God does it different every time. You never know. Like, you know, you can't really systematize rescue, really, mm -hmm. because it's just going to come when you least expected it from avenues that you just had no idea you couldn't anticipate. One more story, too. Yeah, bring it. All right. So we did water filters in a village. And it, three, four years ago, we did these water wow. filter distribution there. And there were no believers in that area. But in this roundabout way, we ended up with a girl at our House of Hope from that <laughs> village, that specific village. And uh, let's see, at that when they were jumping up and down for joy, Right after that is when she gave her heart to Jesus. Mm. And um, so she's the first believer from yeah. her now from her village. And it just it's neat to see things come full circle. And she's excited about 
sharing Jesus with her village now. Yeah. So you know there's going to be light that's mm. going to go out to that amazing and back I to that, that area. Yeah, oh, phenomenal. Um, I I should say by the way I, I I'm not sure if I mentioned this is my flamingo friend. He lives in my office, but because uh, I didn't want to be the only one on camera, I I brought my flamingo to share the camera, <laughs> but he's kind of taken up my elbow room, so we'll just. Let's get rid of that guy. He's he was all blown out on camera anyway. Um, how can we be praying for you guys? Like what? Th- this must be. Uh, you guys have been able to c- kind of tour the United States for the last four to six weeks, which I'm sure has been good to kind of touch base with with family and things like that. But I- there must be times of of loneliness, and it just uh, it's got to be hard sometimes. I would say uh, we each have different experiences. Um, I don't feel lonely myself. Um, I feel really a lot of purpose Hmm. being there in Nepal. And we have a lot of really good relationships with people. Even even, uh, people that are um, expats that network with us there. So we we don't feel lonely. I don't, Mm -hmm. at least. Uh, Neither of us feel lonely. I think wisdom uh, in yeah. navigating, uh, you know, everyone's so different and so complicated yeah. and, and everyone has different needs. And, and uh, um, when there's trauma, what is the root of that? How do, we, how do we get to the bottom of that so we can really truly help them? Yeah. Um, so I think wisdom would be a key for us, uh, prayer point. Um, and also, you know, on a practical level, how to really become sustainable where we're working. Yeah. Um, so because we want to grow, like we want to have more houses of hope, you know, um, yeah. we want to impact more people. Um, but in order to do that, we need we need to be sustainable yeah. as, a, as a company. Yeah. So that that's a, a prayer point. Yeah. And you guys are looking for opportunities. I mean, you're you are there uh, in part to to be involved in the economy, not just to bring others along, but actually to, you know, you yourselves be yes. generating economic opportunity. Absolutely. Um, what are, what what's on the horizon for you guys for that? As you look into 2022, what are some of the things you're going to be w- developing? Well, besides our incubating businesses, which we like the quail farm, for instance, we want to see them grow. Yeah. You know, we're at 700 eggs a day now. We want to see them at near 2,000 eggs That's per day. That's a lot of omelets. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, as, we, as it grows, more people get employed. Uh, you know, there's more economic benefits. Um, and everyone wins, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, as our company... Um, is really um, moving a little bit more into the digital marketing space. Mm. Um, so we're, we're going to be creating uh, videos, uh, different kinds of videos, brand story videos, testimonial mm-hmm. videos, promotional videos for companies uh, to help them get more customers and help them with their social media content and things like that. Yeah. So we'll be looking to do that as a company in 2022. Yeah. yeah. Wild. So from my side, I would love to hire an aftercare um, worker, someone who works with the women after they graduate from the program Mm -hmm. to keep them, um, just stay in touch, keep them accountable, make sure that things are going smoothly with them. So that might be something to pray for. Also, I I think for wisdom because... We have a God who gives wisdom liberally, yep. so we just need to <laughs> tap into it. And we found that he does connect us when we need connecting to the next step, the next thing. Yeah. So, you know, even if we've got, like, experts listening to this podcast in certain areas that could come and do trainings, they could yeah. apply through Impact Nations. You can send them our way, you, um, you know, to come and visit this undisclosed country. <laughs> 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 and... Uh, and yeah, teach our women some new skill that they yeah. might be, you know, might help them in their future. Um, also, too, I w- I would also say it's it's not a lot of loneliness because we we have a lot we have a great support network even like Christina calls on a regular mm-hmm. basis yeah. and we've got friends that we know are praying for us. But what we do need is energy 
that's I think <laughs> <laughs> where my prayer request would be just energy for each day and um un, an ability to speak the language in the heart language like I would say on a personal level that's something that's been my prayer need for the last three years yeah. because it's their heart language. You know, I can understand some mm -hmm. and I can speak very simple phrases. I'm like at a preschool level, but I want to grow that. Yeah. So yeah, just understanding the language. Hmm. Um, you have mentioned a few times just the, the uh, connection with impact nations and you guys are, um, long-term members of the Impact Nations family uh, and been serving in, in clean water, been on a lot of journeys of compassion uh, before you guys moved away. Um, what does it mean? Just you're speaking to the Impact Nations family at the moment. Like what's it mean to be a part of this family? Um, just knowing that you got a whole bunch of people cheering you on. Wow. It's been life changing for us. Hmm. Uh, we were in we were in a place before where we were longing to see miracles and people coming to know Jesus. And when we became part of this family, we got to see not just wish or long right. for, yeah. but we got to see it and be a part of it. And there's something about having friends across the world. Hmm that makes it feel a little bit like heaven, yeah. you know, because heaven is going to be people from every tribe, mm -hmm. tongue, nation. And so it just feels a little like that. Yeah. Mm. And also on a practical level, like there's been a number of times we've been in a crisis or um, just a real uh, crossroads. And at that moment, even sometimes unprompted, you know, someone from Impact Nations will call or um, or give us a word or a dream or something that really makes a difference, yeah. you know, that sparks faith mm -hmm. and just helps us to move forward. Yeah. You know. Hmm. So. I notice Anne has asked a question. Oh, thank you. Uh, after 12 months at the House of Hope, uh, do you help the women find a home or can they stay longer? That's a good question because we talked about it in, in the catalog, you know, they're there, it's a kind of a one-year program. What happens after that year is up? Well, we never kick anybody out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we have had two graduates. The one who's welding is our first graduate. And the other graduate worked at the quail farm. Mm -hmm. And so we do find them a space. We want them to their next step to be healthy and for them not to go back to any previous patterns or lifestyles. We aren't completely 100% successful at that yet. Sure. But... I know that the seeds we've planted, I learned this from your dad, Steve, uh, Tim. <laughs> I learned it, learned it from Steve. There's nothing wrong with the seed that's thrown out there. Mm, and yeah. we're very liberal with our seed Indeed. because there's a lot of it in the yep. bag. Yep. And um, we can just toss it out there. <laughs> so uh, any, so the out of the first two graduates, one is welding and the other one that was working at the quail farm is no longer working at the quail farm, mm -hmm. but I have still have hope for her. Yeah. You can pray for her. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we will never, we will help everyone to take that next step yeah. into something that's affordable and that will provide for them. They're also, all the women save with any work that they do get. Um, they save a portion of what they earn so that they can like start to pay their rent. They have something that they can yeah. live off of. Yeah for the first little bit till they... I, I'm glad that you mentioned, you know, your your batting average isn't a thousand. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> in ministry, we, of course, we celebrate the wins and uh, we, we those are the stories we're more often going to tell, of course. And yet, I, I think it's important to recognize, like, there are ups, but there's also downs. Like, there mm -hmm. are times when we just, it's painful to see somebody make choices that, you know, we didn't <laughs> guide them towards. Uh, and and it's painful to see somebody's business who, you know, they were given it their all and it, it's not going well. Um, and yet uh, seeking the beauty in those processes and, and waiting for the Lord to come and show himself strong in the midst of that even. Um, 
I, we were joking earlier today about a, a, a moment in my career a few years ago where of kind of great pain, uh, and yet how God, fast forward several years later, and I look back and go, wow, God really used that to teach me some things uh, and to teach us as an organization some things. Uh, we really actually, in a sense, that, that, that moment of failure was a springboard into some really great areas of strength for us now as a result, and we had to, we had to fail to learn. Mm. Uh, and I think sometimes we're afraid, uh, we're afraid of failure, we're t- afraid to talk about failure, uh, when the Lord is quite eager to use that failure just the same, to build our character and to strengthen us and prepare us for what's coming. We have a couple sayings that we kind of live our lives off of. One is make new mistakes. Oh, I like that. Yeah, don't repeat the old. Make new mistakes. <laughs> and we learn. I say around here. <laughs> <laughs> and we learn many good things in a hard way. So, mm. you know, like yeah. even with even, I've never done this before, had a house of hope. You know, the, saying yes to Jesus always opens new doors. And it's like we do. We learn many good things, but sometimes it's in a hard way. Yeah. And that's the case even with some of the women at our house of hope. Yes. You know, if, if they make wrong choices, God is still loving them. He's still for them. He's still after them. So I have, I'm filled with hope. And, yeah. you know, the, if our listeners, they can keep praying that they'll also feel that hope. Yeah. I think that's that's part of the culture that we learned at Impact Nations, really, even on some of the journeys of compassion. It was like, uh, do we give each other permission to make mistakes, you mm. know, and yeah. uh, take risks? Uh, if we don't try things, we'll never know. And yeah. so um, even with people, we like, like Cynthia had mentioned, um, that you spread seed liberally. And some is on good soil. Some you don't know what kind of soil it is. And so, yes. Uh, we're, we believe that eventually we'll see good fruit. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, and you have seen some good fruit, and we'll continue to see. And we're we're just praying for uh, for expansion and and just an exponential growth and what what you guys have sown into. Uh, we're just we're so excited and thankful to be a part of what you guys are doing. Um, it's, we're blown away that you guys are a part of this family and all that you're doing. Um, I'm just so excited to, to continue to sow into your ministry and, uh, and be a part of what, what it is that God's up to in that nation. Thanks, Tim, because we wouldn't be where we're at if it weren't for Impact Nations. Mm. So it's been an awesome family to be a part of and a journey to be on with you guys. Yeah. And, you know, um, that might be a moment for me to do an aw shucks thing, but I'm actually going to flip that around. I, I think that actually it's really important for our listeners to hear that. Because uh, you guys aren't the first ones to have said that here in this space. Uh, we do, anytime our partners are in town, we get them into this place. And we, we talk about these things. And I think it's really important for our listeners to understand how vital of a role they play in the Impact Nations family. When you give to Impact Nations, you are empowering folks like this to get the job done. Mm. To go and demonstrate the gospel, both practically, supernaturally, to meet people's needs, physical and spiritual. Uh, and bring about long-term transformation, generational transformation. Uh, that happens because uh, you guys are brave enough and crazy enough to just go try new things and learn things the hard way. But it also happens because our donors, the Impact Nations family, are willing to give of themselves uh, in their in their money, in their prayer, uh, sometimes in their time coming to, to be with us in these many nations. Uh, None of it would be possible without this global family, as you said. Uh, and so I, I think it's really, really important that people just receive what you just said because uh, I'm so proud of the Impact Nations family. I just, I, you know, my job is just to stand in the middle, as I always say. You know, I get to connect this incredible uh, family of donors to this incredible family of partners who are on the front lines every day doing the stuff, bringing the reality of heaven to some pretty difficult, dark places at times. Uh, and you do it fearlessly with great courage, uh, with great compassion, with grace, uh, and with joy, unbelievable joy. So thank you for, for being the hands and feet out there. It's amazing. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, I asked if you had any food money, and mm. within like, what, 24, 36 hours, yeah. we were feeding people that yeah. had been flooded out mm-hmm. that had lost all their food. Yeah. So that's like 
another yeah. awesome yeah. impact opera. nations family to the yeah. rescue yeah it's amazing uh one of the things that i love is because uh because we're small, I think we can move funds pretty quickly, actually. So, that, yeah, we can get money across the globe really fast. Uh, oh, here's some photos that Isaiah's put up uh, of, of folks eating food. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I don't know that, what we're looking at. That's a little video, actually, oh. where they all say, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. That's marvelous. Well, that's probably a good place for us to leave off. So I, we say to you, thank you so much for being with us today. And thanks for pouring into our team. You guys just spent the day with us. I'm sure you're tired and ready to get back and get some rest. But you have spent the day here just sharing stories with our team um, here in the office and, and now with our listeners at home. So thanks for giving of yourselves once again. Actually, it's more energizing than you think. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Tim. We really feel honored bless you guys all right well uh that concludes another special episode a bonus episode if you will of the impact nations podcast thank you so much for joining us today uh be sure to uh subscribe to this podcast if you, if you don't already head to impactnations.com slash podcast uh you can subscribe on a number of platforms there that way you're going to get the audio delivered direct to your phone uh so you can listen uh on your way to work or what have you uh join us here uh thursdays uh we are on facebook live we're on youtube live thursdays at 3 p.m mountain time we're currently uh in week 31 of our series on Matthew, season five, uh, we're doing a very, very, very deep dive on the book of Matthew, uh, typically about a half a chapter a week. Uh, and uh, bring your notebook, bring your Bible, you're going to get stuff that you uh, really never saw in the book of Matthew, I promise you. Uh, it's my job to take some a, a few notes to ask questions, and so often I'm caught making detailed notes in my Bible instead of writing down the questions that I need for the interview. But uh, there you go. I think it's really going to bless you. So impactnations.com slash podcast. And don't forget, impactnations.com slash Christmas. Uh, if you've heard stuff today that you just like, ah, i got to get involved. I really want to be a part of this. Uh, it, you can do that. Head to impactnations.com slash Christmas. Uh, look for Gifts of Hope. Uh, and you're going to be giving directly to these guys, directly to their ministry. Uh, you can train a woman in welding if you want. Uh, you can help a kid get to school, like they said. They, uh, they're sending these kids to school um, so you can pay for that education uh, you can cover the entire year's worth uh, of staying at the House of Hope if you want for a young woman and her kids so check that out thank you so much for being with us oh there's some kids off to school right there I love it um, uh, we will catch you on Thursday thanks and God bless <laughs>